All right, so after seeing all the comments on my last video of my toy hauler conversion, I'm gonna make this video much shorter with no music. I did not know everybody hated the music. I should have read all the comments, all the videos I saw. So uh, let's get to it. We'll start in the front of the trailer on the outside and then work ourselves in. All right, so we'll start here in the front. In the front, we have uh, extended four foot V-nose. It was a pretty good option for the money. And the other good thing it gives you, it gives you a hard 90 degree on the inside of the V-nose instead of a 45, like if you were to have a standard one. We also have an electric jack, which I definitely recommend. Sorry for the Spider-Man Band-Aid, but I just cut my finger. And that's all I could find. And it also has a light here for doing it at night. Here we have a storage box from Harbor Freight. I'm going to have to paint it. Harbor Freight can't paint nothing to save his life. But um, just to keep all the sewer hoses, ratchet straps, just to keep the inside of the trailer clean. And it could lock. And then we'll come our way this way. Pretty standard. You can see the windows I added, the LED floodlights up there and then towards the bottom. I have some uh, underglow lights that you could change your colors. It looks pretty cool at night. I'll put a link up top so you could uh, see that video how to put them on. We'll move our way to the back and the back added this spoiler here i highly recommend that option as well if you're pricing a new trailer just because in really hard rains for some reason i kept getting water coming around the roof into the back door and when you get that option it also comes with these three led lights up there which are kind of good for loading up and stuff i got it open here you can see i put diamond plate on the back wall to kind of help with the tire marks because we painted it the same as a floor and it just looked really ugly when you close it up and you can see all the tire marks that it would leave on the back deck and this is a little bit easier to clean too so at least the wall looks nice and it reflects light and that's what we look like with everything up out of the way got plenty of space uh, i believe it's like 19 feet from the back of the trailer to that back wall there so a full size car does fit in here still. And then on this side, it's a little bit more plain. We just got the one window for the dining room, one window in the kitchen. And here we have a generator door, which is where our mini split is inside of. And not only does it have our mini split, we got our battery mounted back there. That's our power distribution solar controller fire extinguisher light we got a hook here to hold the hose and a hook here to hold our power cord and we also have our inverter this is the plug for the transfer switch for the refrigerator i had it unplugged because i was charging my scooter with the inverter and that's pretty much it you could hold it open like this if you know it's going to be good weather this piece here is also adjustable that you could put it on this one It'll stay pretty horizontal if it's gonna sprinkle or something like that. And if it's gonna get really bad weather, I usually just close it, prop it open a little bit on the bottom, and the AC hasn't had a problem since. This AC is also great because it makes no noise and it consumes less electricity. And it also has a heater, so it's a heat pump AC. So everything out of that one unit. And as far as on the outside, that's pretty much it. Now for the bottom of the trailer and all our connections, you can see here is the solar panel wire that comes out. It's pretty long, so you can move it around and get to the sun. There's our panel one, so 100 watt panel. And then here is our sewer connection here. And our hose connection is right behind it there. So from the outside, it all looks original. You can't see anything. And the other thing I changed on the bottom of the trailer is the suspension. I put the Timberin suspension. It's like a rubber dampening suspension. Makes the ride much better. And you can see each wheel's completely independent of each other. It has a rebound bumper. And by doing that, I gain about two or three inches. And then I also put these 16 inch tires, or 16 inch rims with 235, 85, 16s on them. These tires are about 32 to 33 inches, so that gave me another inch of ground clearance for those tires. So I've gained about four or five inches total from the whales originally. 
because the first day I took it out, I got stuck in Walmart leaving. And you can see it kind of damages back corner a little bit. But nothing crazy. So let's work our way in. All right, so we'll start at the front of the trailer, which is where we have the bathroom. You can see the extended V-nose gives you that nighty inside, so we're able to push that shower all the way to the corner. And this is a full size 32 by 60 shower with uh, the wall panels and back panels on the floor. And we built it on a subfloor. That way we could keep all the plumbing inside the trailer and we didn't have to cut any of the beams or have plumbing hanging pretty low on the bottom. So all the plumbing goes pretty much through there into the kitchen cabinet where it tees off that I'll show you in a little bit. Here we got a little hamper, which I also recommend because it's nice keeping all your dirty clothes in one place. Three towels with three towel holders. We got a small storage up here for some uh, wipes and mousse for my wife. And here we have a self-contained toilet. And it comes with a little base on the bottom. What I like about this toilet, it has an electric flush and it just looks a lot nicer than most portable toilets. Like I said, I, I don't want any holding tank. I just don't want to deal with hoses full of poop or tanks full of poop. And on this trailer, we have no tanks mounted to the bottom. So there is nothing to break off or rip off. Our water tank is external if we need it. So now let's go to the kitchen. All right, so here we have our kitchen area. See, we have some cabinets up top, the little mini Whirlpool microwave in the corner, sink, uh, induction range that we usually store down there, but just showing you different kind of options that you could use for cooking. It's not always good weather outside. We've been stuck in a couple storms and we couldn't cook because we didn't want to put the barbecue inside the trailer. So we got that and we also make breakfast and stuff in the morning on it outside and it all runs off the uh, Predator 3500. So there's no need for any gas, propane. We never run out of gas because we always got gas cans. You can see down there we got a storage where all the plumbing's at and the water heater. And this big white area is going to be the AC box from the outside. And that's what the inside of the power distribution looks like. I'll put a link in the description for this. But you can see all your 12 volt circuits are on one side. All your 120 amp circuits are on the other side. And I... Added everything confused when I first did it. That's why you see all these mistakes. I need to make some new labels for everything. And this also charges your battery as well. And here we got the fridge with a small storage up top. The idea of that top storage was to keep the barbecue in it, but I did not realize that when you open it, it would hit the lights. So I'll show you guys in a little bit. So we just leave it for a small little storage for like bread and stuff. And then uh, here we got the refrigerator was spy locked. And this is all refrigerator, no freezer. We uh, really didn't use the freezer in our last one and we lost a lot of space in the refrigerator. So I opted to just get a 100% um, refrigerator mini fridge. And the other good thing about it, like earlier, you can lock it here to make sure that it doesn't open because when you're moving around stuff does move around and on the side here you can see we have the outlet here's our power button for the inverter so if we turn that on now our fridge is running off the battery and behind the fridge there's a transfer switch that I'll put a link also and it's pretty cool um, the second you hook up shore power generator power it'll transfer right over to that and run off and stop running off the inverter but the whole time you're driving it's nice because it'll stay on and it's charging with a truck or if we don't have power somewhere it could run pretty much all day oh we've never had the battery die on us with just a panel and then it'll charge the battery back up once we turn the generator on so that's pretty much it for the fridge I'll show you guys the storage is up here just some plates Pots and pans, first aid kit. Here we got a mini air fryer, rice cooker. I made these uh, little custom track lights underneath the cabinets to kind of light up the kitchen area. I put these uh, stick on backsplash tiles. You're gonna have to put some kind of um, smooth surface on top of the plywood because they don't like sticking to the plywood. So I put them on top of 
this like white I think it's like a white dry erase board that they sell in Home Depot but you do have to be careful because I left the windows cracked open and it looked like it rained and you could see here a little bit where it's gotten damaged on the bottom of the window from water coming in that I have to fix that also get as deep sink as you can because it's nice having a deep sink and you can see the custom epoxy countertops I made kind of go with the wheels matches uh, wheels on my truck too but it came out pretty good and then I'll show you down here you can see our plumbing we do not have a p-trap because I never hook up to the uh, public sewer it's just gray water it's either shower or sink water so I sometimes just dump it on the ground or I have a hose and little 15 gallon tank setup that we use and then I'll just dump that 15 gallons into the sewer system that way I'm not connecting my hose into anybody else's sewer hose connections and here you can see where I supported the uh, pipe there with a little 3d printed piece and that's our T for our shower drain and that's our Bosch 7 gallon water heater there that I'll put a link in the description as well it looks nice it's pretty compact and I believe it holds like seven gallons of hot water so it lasts plenty for two showers and that's the connection and then you could see where cold water comes through the floor there which is the connection we saw outside it goes there to our sink and then it goes over to our hot water heater and then it tees off to the shower and then it comes back to the sink and goes to the shower so pretty simple and then another fire extinguisher Another good option to get is a recessed spare tire in the floor. You can see here it doesn't really take up much space. It does affect that door stop though. And then we have in here another full size spare tire to match the ones outside. And then here you could put all your tools and everything you need for your lock nuts and stuff because that way you don't have to look for it if something was to happen. You know where everything's at. Everything's right here. And you'll never leave it at home because I can't tell you how many times on my old trailer I would forget the spare tire at home just because I didn't like leaving it in the trailer. And it looked ugly so I'd always keep it in the back of the truck and I'd always forget it. So no more forgetting the spare tire there. Alright so continuing moving along. Here we got a little jacket hat rack, which is nice for when the weather is cold. You could hang up your jackets right there and stuff, your hats, whatever you need. Here you can see the door also has a fixed window. Here is our light switch. We got a 12 volt outlet and a USB. And then here are the two inside light switches. That's the outside light switch and I have a spare. I did have to print these uh, 3D printed uh, spacers though, because the switches were too deep and they're hitting the outside of the door. Down here we got a little shoe rack we bought from Ikea that I uh, ended up shortening and narrowing because it came out into the stairs and past the wardrobe. But that is another great option. Before we'd always have a bunch of Crocs thrown on the ground and shoes to go out at night everywhere here by the door. And this kind of keeps all our stuff organized in one spot. Here's the only piece of furniture that we really bought. It's a all wood wardrobe. Make sure you don't buy any particle board because the particle board will come apart with the movement in here. And this is bolted from the top to the side of the trailer up there. And that is a carpet my wife keeps up there that goes along the floor here. And you can see inside, right now we got all the pillows and stuff in here. But what's great about having a wardrobe or somewhere to put your clothes is you don't have to deal with any kind of luggage. So before we leave on a trip, put all our clothes in here and um, you don't have to worry and deal with luggages and stuff like that before we had a luggage under the bed that was kind of a pain and then on the bottom drawers the top one we also use for clothes and the bottom one's just full of kitchen stuff here we got another coat hat rack and the folding chair holder these three chairs will come over here for our little dining room area because it is not always great weather and we've been stuck in the trailer sometimes in our old trailer just eating on the floor because we really didn't have an eating area to eat inside so we made this little area we've only used it once or twice or back then if we took vacation and my kid had school he could sit here and do his uh online schooling through there so that was another option we did 
I think I mentioned it before, but outlet with USB, which is nice for charging your phone. And now all my kids' uh, remote control cars come with USB charging. Here we have the window to look outside, and that is the mini split, the inside unit. It does work great. The only thing, if it is really hot outside, how it is blowing kind of sideways in the trailer, not longwise, you sleep back there. So sometimes the air does not make it back there. So we'll put a little fan here to uh, help blow that air back there. And then this table has the same stainless brackets that the chair holder has. And you can see there's just little tabs down there. And I'll include some link, uh, link in the description for those as well. It's the same on that and on this chair holder. And I just 3D printed um, to hold the chairs evenly separated and stuff like that so they won't fall off and bang into each other too much. Here is my son's bed slash sofa. It's a twin bed that I modified and put hinges on one side. And then we have this little ratchet strap here that goes around to hold it up. And I had to print these little feet. That way the rope wouldn't, because the rope was coming down, you can see where it scratched and it started to heat the rope a little bit. So I printed those pads out and it's been helping. It's like a little memory foam mattress. And here's another window and the blackout blinds before I forget. And you can see how the windows open and close as well. They don't open much, but they do let some air in. But back to the blackout blinds is something I highly recommend. It's so nice to be able to sleep in here. My last trailer will get so bright in the inside you couldn't say sleeping once the sun came out. So me and my wife like sleeping in. So that was a great addition. And they're really easy to install. You just put the brackets on the wall and I put them just over the windows. And they're really long, but I just needed this size. But I'll include the link for these as well, just in case you're looking for them. Because those are... 100% blackout curtains. I mean you get a little bit of sun coming through the sides of them But really nothing comes through it and they all have them And they all you know go out of the way nicely and it's nice when you're storing the trailer To be able to close those and protect the inside of the trailer and it gets less hot in here um, Here we got one d-ring there to tie down and then I had to move this d-ring tie down The floor is raptor lined. It's already three years old. So you can see some tire marks and then from when you wash the bikes and some rusty water comes out. Uh, so far it's holding up okay. It's not great. You can see pretty much everywhere one piece of plywood meets the other. It's been chipping away because I guess it's not flexible at all. And you can see there on the all the borders where it's caulked. You can see it all chipping away. So I either either come up with some gray caulking to caulk all the joints. Or uh, just thinking about redoing the floor with like a one-piece vinyl, something like that. And another thing, I had to make this door here removable. Because all the service ports on the AC unit are down here in this corner. So if I ever had to service the AC, it has four bolts and a gasket that goes all the way around it. You would remove that and you could access all the uh, AC. Another thing I had to invent here because I didn't know what to do and I didn't want to rip down all the walls because I did get this trailer pre-insulated because I didn't want to mess with it. So that was another option that was pretty expensive but I feel well worth it. But the problem was I had one light where this light is and the other light over here where this light is and I didn't want any exposed wiring or anything like that. So I saw in uh, some fancy RV, they kind of had like these cool lights. So I decided to make them and then ran the wiring inside of here. And on the outside, it's kind of like a false ceiling and it has an LED strip that goes all the way around both of them. And so far the lighting's pretty good. I mean, it could be brighter, but it's more than enough for what we need. And then as far as running the wire for the floodlights, I, again, I didn't want to take anything apart. So I kind of, it's almost like a crown molding kind of. And all the wiring for the floodlights goes behind that molding there that is put at like a 45. And that's also how the power gets back to the bed. And here we have the Happy Jack bed, right now it's up. I'll set the phone up in a little bit and show you how it comes down. And we got these little lamps and they're kind of nice, just everything's touch. 
So there's the light on, and it, you could just do like the blue light if you just want to see where it's at. And they also have a USB, so there's no need to have any cell phone chargers or anything back here. That will charge your uh, both cell phones. And back here we have the switch for the bed and the switch for the three lights up here. And you can see I'm walking perfectly fine underneath the bed without it hitting my head. Here we got our uh, 40 inch TCL Roku TV. It's nice because it has Netflix and all that stuff. So we put my wife's hotspot on, we use it. And the small DVD player, and it's also on a swivel mount. So you would pull this here and you could bring the whole TV out this way. I'll include uh, those links as well. And all the wall paneling that you see, like that wood paneling, is all from Home Depot. Because I know a couple people asked me in the last one. They got a couple different colors. I like this one because it was the brightest one. So that's pretty much what I did the whole trailer with. So now I'll set up the phone on a tripod and I'll show you just how fast we go from having this big area to uh, ready to sleep. There you can see how fast just that was. Got the uh, table set up here. You can see those brackets fold down out of the way. We got our son's bed slash sofa where we could sit here and watch TV. And he goes to sleep there. And those pillows also protect him from falling onto the uh, wheel wells. And back here we got our happy jack bed. Another option I highly recommend buying. I've seen a lot of do-it-yourself beds and honestly they don't look great and by the time you start adding up how much all your bits and pieces are and trial and error I mean, you're really not saving much I got pretty lucky I got this one used it was pretty much brand new so I didn't have to come up with all the money and it also came with the bed frame and you can see that this bed frame also includes two small cup holders here like a little storage in here so we kind of use it like a nightstand and then there we got the remote for the DVD player and the AC. And that is pretty much it for the inside. And you can see how much nicer that diamond plate wall looks like instead of just painted floor full of tire mark. Because all the floor is pretty much covered by carpet anyways. So it looks much better when everything's set up in here. But that's pretty much it for uh, inside the trailer. Oh, another thing I think I forgot to mention is adding a mirror somewhere because you'll be surprised how many times you need one. So we added it there to the back door of the bathroom. So uh, we'll go outside and I'll show you some of the things I think are helpful when you're camping. And uh, that'll be it. All right, so here we are outside with all the stuff that's usually in the trailer. Um, here you can see we have a collapsible 55 gallon uh, trash can which is really nice because when you use it, it stores out of the way it's small that usually stays under the sink here we have the water tank set up this is a water sprayer from Harbor Freight <clears throat> I upgraded the pump on it because the pumps they come with are pretty weak um, I'll include a link for that pump and the uh, garbage can I also have another sprayer 
each tank is uh, 15 gallons so that's 30 gallons and then I also have another 15 gallon tank so I have a total of 45 gallons I could take and the other nice thing about having external tanks is I could just put the tanks in the back of the truck take them to go get filled up and just come back without having to move the trailer here you can see we have a pretty long water hose that they could even stay in the back of the truck and here is the power connection and I also have like an extension for this so it will also reach the back of the truck and this just plugs into where the uh, electric jack is so I'll just unplug the jack and then plug in the water pump <clears throat> another or two great things to keep the trailer clean is here we have a battery Makita vacuum and a battery blower so when we take everything out of in here we'll just blow it all out because the, they just leak sand and stuff and then we'll vacuum before we put all the rugs down and it's just nice to be able to keep the trailer clean because you're just bringing sand in this thing all day long so I hate having my feet dirty here we got um, some nice reclining chairs that way we can relax pretty nicely there we just got a regular black folding table so we could eat outside and we just got this new table <clears throat> from Sam's Club what I like about it has that one side that's metal so you can put your barbecue there you don't have to worry about the hot grease falling on it and messing up the plastic here you can see on one side it has a little bag holder for a 15 gallon bag and then here in the middle it has to hold your utensils and then here on this side it has a paper towel holder so it's a pretty good little setup got a sam's club and there you can kind of see all the stuff it does The other thing we have over here is a little step stool. It helps my son step on there to brush his teeth because the sink's kind of high. And to get to that storage above the refrigerator so you can see what's up there. Here we got this little bean bag. That if you're dirty and you just want to chill out, you don't want to dirty your bed or anything. We usually put this right there. And you can sit on that while you're waiting to take a shower or whatever it is. And then lastly, we have our pop-up tent and these little jugs here, which are Euromax. I got them from Amazon. I'll include a link. But what I like about these is between all of them, they'll hold like seven gallons of water. So it'll give you one last shower if you're boondocking. And each one, I think, weighs about 10 pounds once you fill them up. And you can see there kind of has like that groove where the foot of the canopy will go into and it has a velcro strap so it's on there pretty secure and a second plus is it gives you a little bit more water for that last night and uh that's pretty much it if i forgot anything or you guys want to know anything else just let me know drop a comment down below um some people in the last video were asking what brand trailer this is this is a synergy I had a couple problems with them in the beginning, but I mean, all these cargo trailers, none of them are perfect unless you buy an ATC or something like that. But so far, it's been about three years, so she doesn't look new anymore, but she still looks pretty good. Semi screwed exterior. I got the extra foot of height from the factory, the spoiler from the factory, all the insulation from the factory, and I also moved the door back about two feet. Um, from where they would originally put it and then also the extended vinos in the front with the generator door those were pretty much all the options i bought from the factory well guys that's it um i do have a more detailed video that i'll put a link after this if you want to watch that but there is some music that i have been told could be kind of hard to listen to what i'm saying so if you could deal with it, there's a lot of good information in there. But this is pretty much just the summary of it. So I hope you guys like the video. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like do-it-yourself kind of videos, I'm going to be building a house soon on this lot. So uh, stay tuned and check out the progress.